Thanks very much, Nastasia. Yes, we're here, of course, uh, in Cape Town at the Cape Town City Hall, where Finance Minister Inok Godongwana is going to be delivering his mid-term budget policy statement. It's the second one that he'll be delivering. And of course, let's just remember why uh, the speech is being delivered at the City Hall. If we recall, on the 2nd of January, I think it was of this year, Parliament was burnt down, or parts of it were burnt. Um, and that's the place where we normally, uh, you know, convene to hear what the minister has to say. And that's where a lot of proceedings in terms of legislative discussions take place. But that key area, that key chamber was burned and is ashened as we speak. And so, of course, alternative plans have had to be made. And hence, we're here. It does feel weird to be outside of City Hall when we're so used to broadcasting outside of Parliament or in the parliamentary precinct. Um, but of course, that, so that's just to give context as to why it's happening here. And then the other thing is that we do understand that um, there are protests that are beginning around the parliamentary precinct. Uh, people protesting, saying that um, they want better service delivery. We know that's been a key issue that government needs to address. You know, they've got this whole district development model that they keep on talking about. Uh, but on the ground, people are not seeing the delivery that they expect and require. Uh, and, and need. So uh, these are some of the issues, of course, uh, that may come out in the finance minister's speech because government is acutely aware that municipal delivery is lacking and that in itself actually inhibits people people's ability to grow their businesses. Um, and of course, we know that we have uh, uh, concerns around electricity supply, as well as water constraints in the, current, uh, in the country currently as well. But I do have with me um, Chief Economist at Citadel, Martin Ackerman, just to unpack some of the issues and get some sort of thoughts from him as to what we can expect from the midterm budget. Thanks very much, Martin, for joining us. Let's start with something positive. Um, many of you economists economists are coming out and saying that there is a revenue overrun that is relative to what the government or National Treasury was expecting in the February 2022 budget in terms of what it would receive um, in terms of revenue. It's doing it's likely to do far better by the time we reach the end of the fiscal year 2022-2023, which is basically the end of February next year. What is driving that? And should we really get excited about it? I ask that question in the sense that, do you think that this is something sustainable? Yes, thanks. I think a uh, very good question. The, the concern is that, you know, it might not be sustainable. And then today all eyes will be in terms of how do we potentially going to spend that? Because if we spend it on the wrong things, then obviously we're going to be back into a fiscal quiz, you know, uh, going into next year. So let's first understand and unpack why did we get the overrun? It is uh, basically three reasons. It is the, the stronger commodity prices, which was great, so that, that helped a lot. The number, just to put that into perspective, we're talking about 100, maybe 150 billion more than what they budgeted. So it's, it's quite a, you know, it's a, it's a nice tailwind for, for government to work with. So that came on, on commodities, especially mining commodities, but specifically the coal mining companies and the very strong coal price, given the war in the Ukraine, that, that benefited us quite a lot. Uh, the second thing is we had better than expected economic growth. So if economic growth is higher, all tax collected is, is, is better. And uh, the third one is the fact that, uh, you know, they're doing a proper job at SARS, making, getting the house in order. So efficiencies after SARS being captured is being improved. So those three actually contributed to that. But I think the biggest concern is that we know that the world is, is, is slowing. The world is probably entering a phase of below capacity growth, even in SA. So that big tailwind from the commodity is not something that we can bank on. And that's why, again, back to whatever they're going to put onto the table today, need to give us some guidance that, you know, when that starts to fall away, where we're going to spend that uh, um, overrun is going to be sustainable going forward. Absolutely. So one of the areas that uh, people are quite confident of your ilk is that there'll be some announcement about support to ESCOM, which it's been receiving for the longest time, uh, maybe shifting its, some of its debt uh, from its balance sheet onto that of national governments. If that does happen, uh, what are the implications from a debt perspective? Um, and, and would it be a train smash? 
No, so that's something that's been talking about for a long time. Um, I think the final details, the, the October medium term budget is normally just an update where we are and, and what we can look forward to in February. So I think the real nitty gritty stuff will be in the February budget. But nevertheless, yeah, you're 100% right. There is talks about maybe looking at about half of the, the debt. So we're talking about 200 billion that government can take over. Um, that adds to this whole thing about, you know, sustainability longer term because we already got very high debt to, to GDP levels. If we can't get the economy to grow and by doing that, you know, substitute debt with more tax collection, uh, then to actually take over any debt and maintaining that debt implies that there's a further burden on our debt. Um, and that pushes us closer to that, that not the, the, the debt crisis, you know, that the previous Minister of Finance spoke about. So that is definitely one of the areas where we'll look at how they're going to spend this uh, um, overrun. And then the other one, obviously, is the wage bill, which already makes up 40% of the non-interest budget, which is a huge component. We know that they're still talking about, you know, what kind of wage. The government did propose something, but obviously trade unions want something else. Uh, that is uh, another very important item. And then the, the national income grant, or just the COVID grant that's been extended. Yeah. You know, what will happen with that? And you alluded to the in, in the intro about you know people on the street wanting change, not, not happy about service delivery, um, and that is something where we can't actually afford not continuing that, because what we saw last year in case it in will only be the tip of the iceberg if we can't really support the people on the ground that's in in, in big need of support. All right, Martin, thank you very much for your insights there and spending a bit of time with us here at SABC. Hopefully we get to speak to you further. Martin Ackerman there, he's the chief economist at Citadel, giving us his views there on what we can expect around the midterm budget. Uh, of course, uh, my colleague and I, Stest uh, Sitole, we've been looking at uh, the online um, interaction around the midterm budget. He's here with me just to give us a sense of uh, what people are saying online. Thank you very much uh, for joining us, Te. What are people saying online? Tell us about the poll. Thank you so much, Nompo. Of course, as we indicated earlier, that we are running the poll. And of course, on the On Point Twitter account, we are asking you in the 2016 budget speech, the targeted uh, budget deficit for 2016 and 2017 was 3.2. And of course, we're testing your knowledge, just wanting to know from you, is it true or false? And with that being said, of course, go there and participate. We're also asking you to actually watch uh, the budget speech on our social media platforms, digital platforms, to make sure that you stay abreast. Thank you very much, uh, my colleague there, Tembiso Sitole. We're going to cross over now to Bulelani Philip, who has uh, a special guest with him. Over to you, Bulelani. Well, thank you so much, Nombu, and uh, good afternoon to you and to the viewers at home. Of course, uh, I'm going to be joined shortly by Minister in the Presidency, Minister Monty Kungubele, who will be taking us through of uh, what has CapNet uh, been discussing in relation to the budget. Of course, coming into this 2022 medium-term budget policy statement, quite a lot of expectation. Civil society marching here to raise their voices. Uh, Labour unions in government also will be raising their voices, and of course, the markets will be looking at whether the finance minister will be playing a balancing act in terms of the government's priorities. Now, let me bring into this conversation Minister Mondli Kungumele. Uh, minister, good afternoon and thank you so much for your time. Uh, basically, in the broad strokes, Cabinet, uh, what did they instruct the finance minister to speak on in terms of the emphasis areas of his budget speech? Good day, uh, Phillips and your viewership. Maybe let me take you quickly to the background. You will remember the president in 2020, 15 of October, tabled the recovery plan as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic with all its aggravations. And uh, later this year, the president tabled on the 10th of February, uh, his state of the nation address, emphasizing mainly on the issue of energy uh, infrastructure and uh, economic reforms and uh, red tape, all those issues geared towards making sure that economy infrastructure, economy responds very quickly because we are confronted with aggravating triple uh, challenges, as you know. So as we look at the, at the MTBS today, we want to check how is it ensuring that the economy is going to grow, how is it creating conditions for investment, how do we make sure that 
Something goes to infrastructure. How do we intervene as far as small business is concerned? What do we do as far as economic reforms are concerned? Because totally, if the totality of those will also be checked against how the minister is helping us craft our path in ensuring that the macro stability is of such a nature that it is growth oriented. In other words, how do we sustain a fiscal policy that supports growth? Uh, that speaks to the stabilization of debt. That speaks to what we do about deficit. All those elements together will actually give us an idea again how the minister is informed by the global economy which has actually not gone good. Remember at the beginning of this year we were anticipating a better global economic performance. Although there was anticipation of risks, Ukraine has worsened that situation. China's strict, uh, brutal, what to call, COVID measures, which have made their economy not to perform as expected. And you know, a big economy like that of China, when it is not performing, it deals with the demand in special of the emerging, what to call, economy. So there are those negatives. So we're going to check when the minister presents, how is he assisting us to march uh, on a path which is growth-oriented under those circumstances. I don't have a lot of time, Minister, but I need to ask you this question. The biggest problem in the country at the moment is the issue of uh, the security of energy supply. What kind of marching orders will the President as well as Cabinet give to the Finance Minister? I would have said mainly infrastructure, energy and small business. The, you know the President made an energy intervention plan which led to NICOM, uh, 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 energy economic crisis, which is chaired by the president, which was dealing with five interventions, fixing ESCOM, ensuring that you, you lift the ceiling in the private generation, also ensuring that you escalate uh, procurement of gas and other related, and including battery storage, and also ensuring that the electric act is being reformed to open that flow. Lastly, to make sure that our households have got solar rooftops that are going to spill over to, in other words, create conditions for many sources of energy. Lately, President Feather appointed a cabinet of men and women, a, a board, an ESCOM board of men and women, of huge track record chaired by a historic sterling performer, Mpo Makwan. All those together, we hope will actually move in the direction. Of course, we are curious to hear what the minister is going to say in as far as reinforcing the, pres the direction the president is taking to make sure that that central resource energy is taken care of. Should we expect a business as usual or should we expect some radical announcements in terms of economic reforms rather? Uh, we, we, we've made announcement. There are no new announcements in economic reforms. All what we need to satisfy ourselves is that the interventions in that area are beginning to make an impact. Whether you talk rail, you talk ports, you talk, um, uh, what do you call it, spectrum, you talk uh, the, the progress with regard to water resource infrastructure agency, and all those sort of issues, and uh, what am I forgetting, a number of those uh, elements. They, they are really moving, uh, as I can say, the white paper, you remember, on the infrastructure rail with regard to allowing the third participant in the freight rail, also a partner with regard to improving efficiencies on the terminals, that is, Kucha and what to call in Deben. All those reforms are on course. We are monitoring them with a hawkish eye. And then, of course, wherever there are, uh, what to call, uh, troubles, we intervene. Remember, for instance, when you talk about the slot in the rail infrastructure, the, the private sector was complaining about the short-term contract and the state of infrastructure. All those issues are being addressed. So there's nothing majorly to announce on reform other than continuing to implement them. We expect the minister to, to, to not to separate, uh, ensuring that the fiscal policy, hand in hand uh, with the implementation of reforms, those are not separated. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Monte Kungubele. He is, of course, the minister in the presidency. Giving us a synopsis of what we could expect uh, this afternoon when Finance Minister Ino Kodongwana delivers the 2022 medium-term budget policy statement.